today on Living by Faith. Dee Dee. You know what I went out of my way to say? Hey, uh, Keisha, this is my daughter-in-law right here. I ain't letting them think what they could think because I got to protect my witness. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you must protect your witness. But who holds the line? And you ain't going to tell us. You going to say, I ain't drunk. I ain't drunk. You drunk. Every drunk said, I ain't drunk. So he said, run on over there. He parked way over there. Don't run over there and get you a soda, something. Get it. Hurry up. I get out of there. Thank you. Run over there. The liquor store attendant, they always put the bottle in the bag. <laughs> and I'm so thirsty. I'm walking down the liquor store. <laughs> walking back to the car. He rolled out of the way. Take that soda out of the bag. <laughs> I thought he was going to leave me. I said, what's the matter? He's like, who knows that's a great soda, Michael? What was he concerned about? Others. You get upset and cuss people out and then turn and apologize. What are people going to remember about you? What if I cuss one of y'all out? I feel like it. You ain't the only one want to leave this church. And I have to go ahead and continue to come here even when I've been mistreated by you and still mm, get myself together. Why don't you hold the same standard? Because you represent far more than yourself. How dare you somewhere else on a Sunday morning posting it on Facebook? Dee Dee don't even let me get on Periscope. I'm a grown dog on man. Let's get that straight first. It ain't like she run me because some of y'all may have just heard that. I heard that myself. Don't let you get on Facebook. She says, Mike, that wouldn't be wise because people are going to do what they see you do. And just like they watch me, they watch you. You know why? I, unless they know I'm on vacation and it's just vacation, I ain't going to go on Facebook or Instagram or Periscope just hanging out from sh church and showing people. That ain't the witness I want to present. See, but you don't care. But some of you don't know to care, and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm necessary. So you'll know the care about others. If you're the light looking dark, where are they to turn? Where are they to turn? <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with you turning up parties. It makes me, make, but if you in the club, you're like, you're going to church tomorrow. And the person that's just over there watching you, like, oh, don't they? Aren't they a leader in the ministry? We were in Miami. I asked God to relocate me to Miami. Spirit of Faith of South Beach. <laughs> and he ain't even asked me. <laughs> he ain't say nothing. You know, you ask somebody something, they only. <laughs> I was down in South Beach, two, two episodes South Beach. I'm sitting across from these fine young ladies, Dee Dee and I, Brother Don, we at our table, exclusive restaurant, posh, plush, uh, other synonyms, Erica. Come on, you one of my smartest daughters. Come on, let me down. 
um, a nice spot, you said. <laughs> it really was. Upscale. It, it was exquisite. It was, it was, it was, it, it was, uh, it was, what do you say, Eric? Upper echelon. Grandor. Bougie. Bougie. That, that, that's what I'm talking about. Bougie. That's bougie, Jeff. That's bougie. That's bougie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the word right there. Bougie. Everybody say bougie. Everybody, everybody understand bougie, right? Y'all put all your business on Facebook. I'm in this bougie joint. I'm talking about so bougie. I, I, and I like sitting at the restaurant outdoor. I ask the people for a table right by the rail outside so I can just hang out, take in that Miami air. And I want to be right by where the valet is because I'm talking about Rolls Royce, Bentleys, Ferraris, Porsche. I'm, I'm, woo! They be popping out of them, just look like money. I like having my soul in that kind of atmosphere because you got to put your soul in an environment where it can be bathed. Come on. Come on. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. And some of y'all just got upset because he's so materialistic. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say. Get yourself together because what would you rather me be in an environment where we giving each other jumps? Oh. You got some jumper cables? All right. <laughs> dumb. Don't, don't be dumb. You have a choice. Jumper cable or bougie. What say ye? They riding up, man. I'm like, look at here. So there's these fine chicks right to my left. And I'm looking for a way to talk to them. I got to have uh, 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 an icebreaker. Because uh, I don't, I don't want to corrupt, I mean, just interrupt their flow. You can't be in that environment telling and they had wine at the table and that kind of thing. And, and I'm a pastor, I'm, I, I, I don't wanna do this. So this squirrel jumps out of the bush. <laughs> and so I told the girl, I received, I told her, I said, don't, don't be concerned. I got you, I will protect you. You are safe at that table. Dr. Dina and I, we have dominion. Yes. Yeah. Perfect, idea. Perfect. Perfect. Matter of fact, I'm Pastor Mike Freeman. I just wanted to uh, talk to you and tell you that I opened it up and the girl did one of these. I said, what's the matter? She said, oh, because I'm sitting here with wine on my table and you a pastor. I was like, this is so cool that you still have respect and reverence. Yes. For, but, but her doctrine is swirly. Because that ain't going to send her to hell. But there was a conviction there. And I said, well, what's wrong? She said, I haven't been going to church like I should. We had a confession booth right there. I said, look at God. He loves you so much. He set me right next to you. And I've been trying to figure out a way to just talk to you on his behalf. However, if I would have had wine on my table. Oh, see, see, y'all, 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 come on. Ain't nobody gonna stop me from having a glass of wine. That's their bondage. Paul said, although it is lawful, it is not expedient. Yeah. 
and it becomes sin for you to be a stumbling block to others because they ain't going to understand your liberty. They're going to live by it. As I go, just, just think for one moment. If I was cussing people out, or I just use casually profanity in my terminologies. Don't leave now, ladies. Sit down. <laughs> now, that's my daughter. I can play with her. Right? I drink my wine all I want to. I'm... <laughs> You would have something to say about it. Not to mention your friends. Your friends would say, I saw your pastor. And he was riding down the street, music blasting. I turned on some music at my house because I enjoy riding, listening to praise and worship. Brittany is in our house. She drove, pulled up to our home the other day. And like she typically does, just sit in the car. When she was there as a single, she, Brittany will pull up and sitting in the car for the next 15 minutes to gather herself. She, she was just sitting there listening to worship and praise, and I could hear the music from where I was standing. And, and she got in the car. I said, Brittany, you still are worshiping Jesus like that, baby. Thrill my heart. If she would have rolled up, would like kiss my behind and 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 and, and get 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 behind and 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 turn up your behind and and back up your behind. And, and I would say I knew she shouldn't have married Kevin. She didn't leave like that. <laughs> but if you judge your relationship with the Lord by someone else's conveniences, if you're looking at another believer and they are lax in the way that they live out their righteousness and you start now just doing what they do because you don't see the harvest of their actions as it relates to things that you have a conviction about, it's going to hurt your light and your salt and your walk. Just because others go in the clubs and still can sing in the choir, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows. Why am I talking about drinking and clubbing? And lean over on your neighbor and say, because he's talking about the people behind us. <laughs> and then turn around and just look at him. Your witness is so very important. Say, my witness, my witness is, important is important to God, to God. And, others. and others. It was a guy that had a horrendous bow in his leg at Bow, Bow Harbor Mall. Bow Harbor Mall is right there on Collins Avenue in Miami. If you ever have a chance to go there, go there. Even if you're not going to buy anything, just go and buy. I mean, just go and get in that environment. And this guy who didn't appear to be somebody who typically frequents that mall was there. And I saw him coming. Spirit of God said, now you take time out and you share with him. My witness is important to me. I got to make sure I'm always ready. Because if I'm doing something prior to a now a word from the Lord to do me something for somebody, how is what I'm doing going to interfere with what I got to say to them? Like, 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 uh, uh, not too long ago, Keisha and I riding in the Porsche. 
Keisha and I riding in Porsche. We got a top back. She got her little uh, bandana on, wrapped around her head. You know that look? Red bandana wrapped around. She got her glasses on, red bone, light skin. Hair just blowing all in the convertible. I'm like, light skin. <laughs> no, on everything, I promise you. We were riding and we pulled up to a light and somebody, when I pulled up, they looked over and like, Pastor Freeman. <laughs> And then they look clean on past me like, that ain't Dee Dee. You know what I went out of my way to say? Hey, uh, Keisha, this is my daughter-in-law right here. I ain't letting them think what they could think because I got to protect my witness. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you must protect your witness. You don't have to get along. You don't have to go along to get along. So the guy's walking up. I, I promise you he was no taller than this because of the bow in his leg. And I said, God, God, this guy, he obviously had to be treated or is treated a certain kind of way. Spirit of God said, talk to him. I say, man, man, what's happening? How you doing today? How you feeling? He said, I'm all right. And he looked back, Pastor Freeman. I said, dang. <laughs> he can't go nowhere. <laughs> he said, Pastor Freeman, man, I watch you every day. Look at God. Amen. If we aren't the light, in the darkness to represent him who will be the light. And I made it my business to stand there and just talk to him, Moshe. I just made it my business to just share with him. Then he walked off and got a little ways down and turned around. He said, may I have a picture with you? And I felt kind of funny standing next to him. I said, man, get down what you used to do at the club. <laughs> this, this, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you are the glory and the lifter of heads. You are the game changer. You are the difference maker. When you show up, God shows up and changes lives of people. But if they cannot distinguish light from darkness, what good are you? Would you please look at your neighbor and say, baby, go hard or go home. Philippians chapter number four is in essence what I've been sharing with you. Mm -hmm. Now, shout this. The word of God, word of God is, my is my final authority. It's, it's where I make my decisions from. It has top priority. It trumps everything in my, life. in my life. Okay? So now, when it comes to my decisions, my choices, my views, my objectives, my opinions, my aspirations, my endeavors, my disposition, my proclivity, my propensities, when it comes to those things, the Word of God shapes them. And I hold the word of God up as I would a glass, the scripture says, a mirror that I look in. I dress myself accordingly. I take a look into the word of God and I make the adjustments based upon what I'm having reflected back from, to me from his word. Are you clear? I mean, are you clear? So, 
the Word of God has instructed me to identify a person or a person or people or persons that has his anointing on their lives and then imitate them. I cannot imitate every Christian. And it's dangerous to compare yourself with other Christians. You compare yourself with the Word of God, which gives us access or the right to mirror or emulate or imitate the man or the woman of God that we have identified as our holy hookup. Dr. Price is my holy hookup. So I'm in total agreement with his lifestyle. I look at his lifestyle and hold the word up against his lifestyle and I make my decisions on whom I'm going to follow. If he cannot tell me to follow him, believe him. Every pastor should be able to say, follow me. Did you hear what I just said? And I'm not talking about just around the four walls of the church. I was just doing what you were doing last month with my pastor. Dita and I, we flew to uh, Cali and took our pastors out to dinner. Took them out to dinner and let them pay for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the only way he's going to get joy. Yeah, no, no, I'm not going to interrupt his peace or his joy. I tried it one other time, and he pissed a fit. Don't you ever, when you come to my town, he said, your money is no good in my town. I said, well, let's go to Rodeo Drive. <laughs> I'm always thinking, I mean thinking. So, you should not connect with the church because there could be things about a church, I'm talking about the building and the atmosphere and the environment that is not conducive. There's a conundrum. There is an oxymoron that goes on in churches every single Sunday. You got a church environment with no word coming from the man. God, dog, y'all better hear what I'm saying. And some of y'all like church and feeling like you've been to church, but church alone isn't going to change your life. You're having a form of godliness. We're doing the church thing, but your lives are not changing. And so you need to connect with a man or a woman that's going to transform your life. Your life should become a replica of the hookup that you have. And so that requires a certain environment, a certain atmosphere for you to put your kind of fruit in it. That's why anybody's church can't work for everybody. You got to be in the environment, the flow, the vibe of the place where the man or the woman happens to be. Like, for instance, right now I'm growing a pineapple in my home. That's not indigenous to where pineapples grow. But I set up an environment for pineapple. For years, I thought, like some of you, I thought pineapples grow off trees like coconuts. Don't laugh. Some of you sitting right there, you think, they don't? <laughs> they grow plants. They like come right out of the ground. And so I got this pineapple now growing. And Dr. Didi posted one time. She always posts and stuff. I said, stop it. I jumped in the van the other day, rubbing her feet. She took a picture. I said, what are you doing? I'm going to post it. No, you're not. <laughs> she posted it. Somebody commented, said, y'all taking bearing fruit to a whole nother level, boy. <laughs> but your life should bear fruit. And the fruit that's coming off my life, you should have it in abundance. The same fruit that I'm bearing, those who are connected to this branch got to be bearing the same fruit.
Thank you for viewing Living by Faith. If you would like to obtain a copy of today's lesson or any other featured item, please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540. Think above and never beneath. I, that's, that's what I want you thinking for all of your days. You come here, that's what I want on your life, on, on, on your thinking. That's what I do every single day that I get up and I begin to dress. I dress myself, but not just my body. And most people have been dressing their bodies and have not been dressing their soul. What an awesome time it is to be a woman in the body of Christ. Why? Because I have something planned just for you. Something so invigorating, something so exciting, something that's gonna be so amazing that you will not want to miss. God's Glamorous Girls is coming July the 11th through the 13th. You want to be in Baltimore because it is going down. The Fellowship presents God's Glamorous Girls. I'm inviting all of you to come and be a part of it. We have some amazing artists that are gonna be there. We have some awesome speakers that are gonna be there ministering to you. And I wanna see you there. I wanna to touch you. I wanna feel you. I want you to know that I care about you. So I need to see you so I can communicate that with you. See you there, July the 11th through the 13th in Baltimore. to experience a move of God like never before. God's decree, yes indeed. Things are gonna happen so fast, it's gonna make your head swim. It says that you're not gonna be able to keep up. And I am expecting God to do a quick work in here. Some of you came in here, you need healing, you need deliverance, you need salvation, you need a friend, you need love. You just need to know that the mercy of God exists for you. Whatever you need in this place this week, I guarantee you that you won't leave here the same way that you have come in, in the name of Jesus. If you're ever in the Washington or Baltimore metropolitan areas, we invite you to worship with us at one of our Saturday evening or Sunday morning services. Please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540.